What's up YouTube and welcome to Detox Proxy. This is a continuation of my last adventure video. Basically I came down Trapper Mountain and I've come all the way down that fire service road to the upper Limonite Rex Trail, I guess they call it. <laughs> but this is the beginning of the Telco Pass and I actually made an attempt at this about two months ago and I failed because there was snow on the trail on a very steep incline I mean there's like two feet of snow there yeah I mean there's no way there's no way I can make it up here any which way I'm here now and I'm ready to uh, try this again a second time you know I've been watching a lot of uh, van life and just adventure videos and people camping and whatnot and there's another channel that I do watch periodically called, I, I believe their name is Slow Roamers. And they actually made this attempt a couple weeks after I did at least, uh, maybe a few weeks, in a GMC or Chev 2500 with a 4.8 liter rear wheel drive. They made it through. They had to pull some rocks out of the road, which probably helped me make my way through. Most of, the, most of this trail is going to be used by like quads atvs four-wheelers side by sides that sort of thing now i am hoping to set up the camera a little bit and get some you know kind of off-road clips of me going through here but some of this stuff is just not easily passable and to be able to like drive through it and then go back to get the camera it's going to be a lot of work so i may not do as many as i'm actually intending to I've already taken a lot of sun this weekend and i'd rather try and stay in the forester where it's a little bit shaded if you know what i mean all right let's get this party started
And as steep as this incline is, I mean, it's, it's a difficult climb in first gear to begin with. But just seeing the amount, I mean, there's like two feet of snow there. Now that was by far the most treacherous piece of road that I've ever driven on. I mean, it's not really a road, it's an off-road trail, but those rocks were really preventing me from climbing and I started slipping quite a bit, getting too low of power and I stalled out a few times. And fortunately, because I have that hill holder, I was able to kind of take off from a stop position on the hills, but I really had to hammer on the, on the gas and slip the clutch a lot. Uh, fortunately, again, I have a good performance clutch that can take that sort of abuse.
Well, I'll tell you one thing, it's definitely not easy coming through there. That was so rough and I actually had to get out at one point and clear a couple rocks. I mean, I've got the clearance to get over everything. It's just my tires get bound up on one side and I can't get enough traction to get up over top. So yeah, just getting through that section there. I mean, I've seen what the Forester can do. It's pretty amazing at this point. <laughs> I'm just going to continue on, but I'll give you a good shot of this lake in behind me. So this is the middle lake. And then as we get past this one, we'll kind of cross over to the north side and, and past the third lake on the north side. But I'm kind of coming to the end of this one. And as far as I know, there's like a little kind of camping rest area that most people stop to kind of get a, you know, a little bit of a rest and take a bunch of pictures and whatnot. It might be a little bit hard for this camera to see, but there's a good waterfall coming down there. So we definitely have another water crossing coming up here. Just awesome. Really proud of myself getting the Subaru to come through here. I do believe it was this section here that the slow roamers got to and they had to start winching some of these rocks. Maybe that one they pulled out of the way. Kind of looks like it was dragged. Yeah, they had to get really tight over to this side with the trees. Looks like they gave me more than enough clearance to come through here.
I'm gonna count it that that was a fucking pitch hit. so many fucking times.
So I did really want to film at that lake a little bit more. I just took that really short clip. There's just too many people there. And then I was kind of sitting, waiting them out a little bit. And then three more quads ended up coming down. So it wasn't really easy to start busting out the camera and yapping away, but uh, at least I got a few good pictures. I'll kind of throw them in here. And yeah, I got a little chat with some of them. They said going this way, there's a few obstacles, but I'm in my mind, it's probably not as bad uh, as what I was thinking. Maybe I have already been through the worst of it.
I honestly don't get any of those crazy ass fucking rocks, man. Well, I mean, I've made it this far. How would I not get the fuck out of here at this point? Looking at the mileage and this little trail sign, kind of looking at the mountains over there, not so much over there, I'm pretty sure that I've completed the Telco Pass, which is, mm, man, there was some really hazardous spots. At one point I had to bomb on the clutch at like 4,000 or 5,000 RPM and just, just drop it and hope for the best. Uh, really abused the Forester this time around. Yeah, I'm gonna have to really have a good look over it after I get home. And then somehow I even got ahead of that Can-Am at the end, and then he and I ended up letting him go by because he raced up behind me again. But, I mean, just amazing what I've been able to achieve with the Forester, I think. Of course, some people have made it through with some probably less rigging, like that the, the guy uh, that I mentioned at the start of the video. And he ended up getting through here, and I just remember some of the points of where he, hit, he said he really had to punch it. And I mean, kudos to him because man, that was a tough drive. You'd ha you have to have some trail experience before taking this trail. It's uh, a lot more hazardous than I have actually thought it would be. And you got to some of those, the top crests of the hills, you could tell a lot of people have had trouble and they've kicked up all the loose dirt and now it's just basically all sheet rock right at the top of the crests. So as soon as you get up onto it, it's you start losing traction and needing to claw a little bit. At one point I thought I was gonna like back 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 down a little bit just so I could deflate the tires because I actually haven't deflated the tires. I didn't think I would really need to. I probably should have. Very happy, very proud. 
Uh, I pieced this thing all together myself. It's something I've had for 10 years, and then last year I just decided it's time to really do this thing over. So it got the two and a half inch lift and got some all-terrain Cooper Discoverer AT3 tires on. The All the suspension's been redone, so brand new struts all around and then new control arms front and rear. Upgraded the front control arms with aluminum. The uh, clutch has been upgraded, so that would, that's what really allowed me to drive this thing through. I mean, even people realizing that this was a five-speed driving through that trail, it's not easy to, uh, you know, start watching your RPM all of the time to see where your power is because you start dipping down below 1500 RPM and you just start losing that power band. And, you know, at points where you get really hung up, I, I was dropping the clutch like I shouldn't have been. Now it's taken a lot of brush this time and that was kind of expected. Uh, I, I remember from watching the, uh, the other video that they said the trees had grown in down a lot. I didn't really have a problem with them up top, which is the issue they were having because they're so much taller than this thing. But obviously uh, I took enough of them to scratch up the paint even more. I just jumped back in because the wind's picking up a little bit too much. But I, I really do wish that I was able to take a little bit more footage uh, going through the pass itself because there was some really cool spots that I wish I saw how the Forester was managing getting up there. Like there was points I was just being tossed all over the place because of the, the footing. You know, thought I was gonna bottom out on something and how it would have to divert right up into the trees a little bit. And just choosing those proper lines like very fast because you know, you can only maintain so much speed in first gear and you need first gear to be able to do a lot of that. And you know, making a quick decision, is it left, is it right, which way do I put my tires and kind of making those choices fast enough so that you can actually get up without slipping. It was a challenge. It was certainly a challenge. So just keep that in mind if you're thinking of doing the Telco Pass. Honestly, I'm just super pumped and stoked right now because I've been looking at that pass for like three or four years. I don't even know how I found it in the first place or whether someone mentioned it or I was looking on the map and saw it one day. Looking for YouTube videos after that over the years and just seeing parts of it and the, the lake up there. I'm sure there's much more capable vehicles going through there. Uh, than what this is but I, I managed somehow and I you know I didn't take any rocks on the bottom I didn't get held up to the point where I had a breakdown of some kind and I didn't uh, have to you know depend on anybody else to help me through right so yeah I feel it is a big achievement and uh, just feeling awesome right now so yeah if you liked this video i know it was a little bit weird because it was mostly a time lapse and a couple little stops here and there but if you like this video definitely give it a thumbs up and like share and subscribe and i'll see you next time It's not really a fucking truck, but I treat it like a truck.